morning. <laughs> and one of the beautiful, can I get out of that? Hold on a second, sorry, continue. Um, one of the beautiful parts of this new moon, as you all know, is the connection to what our earth energy has as ritual. Can you believe like how many, how many years that we have gone just blindly, this new moon, dark, dark moon, new moon, full moon, half moon, and we just live our lives and we don't connect to these very powerful energies, right? We just had graduation of teacher training and joy. I gave her the name of the goddess of the moon. Such a powerful energy, right? That is so, so auspicious in nature. And one of the things of this eclipse, we were looking at this last night, Eileen and I, is called the ring of fire. And of course, you know, anytime an element comes into the practice, I am in love. But hi, good morning. Um, the idea of this specific eclipse is that the sun represents everything that we do and experience on the outside of ourselves, right? The sun, it's, it's often said that this is the pits of time of the year. So we have so much more sun energy that helps us digest, that helps us to see things more clearly, that keeps us awake longer during the day because the light is so much brighter. So there's what we see in front of us. So the sun energy is what is manifesting. The moon energy is what is continuing to percolate inside of us. Right, the, the incredible nature of how we get to know who we are from deep inside. And that inside energy is also the energy of wounds and samskaras and the energies of patterning and repatterning and who we um, see ourselves as and who we, you know, we have that secret. And I've talked about this before that it, there's something very sweet about having that secret place inside of you that only you know about. When it becomes a challenge is when it's that we don't show ourselves to be who we are on the outside and we're different on the inside. And so today, that idea of the eclipse is when our inside energy, our moon energy, commingles absolutely brilliantly with our outer energy. And when they come together, that we are able to come to a very balanced state of showing ourselves exactly how we want the world to see us and how we want to see ourselves. So today is a very special day with new moon to connect to that, to agree with what it is that you are feeling on the inside and performing on the outside. And so I want to start with an I am meditation. So you're going to take your right hand and place it right in front of your heart, but don't place your hand on your heart, just like about six inches in front of your heart. And your left hand will come in front of your right hand, maybe six inches further away. Some of you have done this with me. And this is just an I am. So it's an I am to the inner world that I am as it balances and creates exactly what's necessary to the outer world of I am. And you just move your hand slowly toward your heart and slowly toward that left hand, slowly towards your heart and slowly toward that left hand. And you say to yourself, I am, you can close your eyes or keep them open, move your right hand towards your left, I am. Back to your right, I am. And back towards your left, I am. This is just your right hand moving very slowly and seeing how important both centers of yourself are the inner world and the outer world, the sun and the moon. The I am. The I am. 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 And as you say this, say it so tenderly and lovingly, like you're speaking to your beloved. I am. I am. I am, 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 I am
I am. 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 Then take a deep breath in. As you exhale, let your right hand fall onto your heart center, your left hand on top. The times that we feel most depleted, off center, ungrounded, is when there's a disconnect between our inner world and our outer world, our sun and our moon energy. Feminine and the masculine, that place that holds steady and that place that animates. So today, as we follow the gift of nature, maybe connect to this eclipse, our outer world and our inner worlds, and we bring them together. Maybe have a little conversation, anything that needs to be healed here or shift it, because the new moon gives you that opportunity to begin again. Bring your hands together in Anjali Mudra. Inhale for the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Oh. Release your hands. Open your eyes. Awesome. Come into child's pose, please. The fire, king of fire eclipse. New moon. And then the, what I posted in my 21 days, every day, I am following the signs the universe is giving me. All my manifestations are turning into reality. I am patient. And I am grateful for already receiving everything I'm asking for. I'm going to be living all my dreams. And it will seem so surreal how perfectly they all came together. I am. I am. I am. And then rise up onto your hands and knees and begin to cat and cow, move your spine. Even as you're moving your spine here, repeating, I am. I am. Can we move into some hip circles here? there's something that you want to bring into now, place a little message out in the new moon tonight. Maybe represent it as a symbol of something or even a letter to the new moon. Circle in the other direction. Maybe it's as simple as healing a wound. How simple is that? I say that is oh so simple. <laughs> Downward facing dog. 
I was sharing in meditation the other day how Veronica, thank God for Veronica. You all know that, right? Thank God for all of you. I have had this little pain in my heart for quite a few weeks. Of course, I walked in. I'm like, will you take care of this? <laughs> will you do something about this pain in my heart? And she did. She held it so tenderly and helped to release a very old pattern. Very interesting, right? Your body appears in pain for you to pay attention now, right? Pain means pay attention inward now. Walk your feet up to your hands. It's interesting in manifestation, what I've been doing in these 21 days, is it's not that you can just ask for something and then just sit back and wait for it to happen. Inhale your arms out and up to the sky. Take a hold of your left wrist and pull to the right. Push down through those legs. And come on up and try the other side. Although I'm going to also say a caveat that the work that you do in your practice in time will definitely give you exactly what you're looking for. Come back to center, interlace your palms, press straight up. I have a friend. Go ahead and keep your arms just like this, hands just like this, and sit back into chair. So you're still pressing up. You're really pulling through those armpits, but softening through those groins. Draw your navel and soften your ribs. Gorgeous. And then just let your arms float out to cactus arms. So allow your chest to open just a little bit more. And then clasp your hands behind your back and bow forward. I'll tell you about my friend in a minute. Now inhale, look forward, keeping your arms where they are and send your left leg back behind you for lunge. So you're still bowing forward. Your left leg comes back, you keep that heel lifted, you're balancing and now you bow inside that right knee. Beautiful. From here, stretch your arms out alongside your ears and reach all the way up to high lunge. Remember the wobbling is a part of the beauty. Gorgeous. Interlace your palms once again, press up. Take a breath in as you release your hands down to the floor. Step your left foot up to meet your right standing forward bend. Bend your knees deeply, reach your arms forward and up chair. Rise up to stand, interlace your palms, press straight up. Maybe you interlace with the other thumb weaving in first. Start to bend your knees here again, softening the groins. Sit bones are going to go wide. This is going to be so beautiful and open for that low back. Keep the navel in. Good, clasp your hands behind your back and bow forward. Keep those shoulders shrugged by those ears. So you got a lot of side body length. Good, Jane. Go straight on those legs any amount. Now look forward. Stretch your right leg back behind you. Stay low. Bow inside that left knee. Beautiful. Nice joy. Tack that left hip crease back. Nice, Susan. Now reach your arms alongside those ears and slowly rise up into that nice high lunge. Beautiful, Chrissy, bend those elbows wide, lift that chest, lean back, really pretty. Inhale deeply, exhale, touch the floor, step back to plank pose. Go slightly past your wrist, lower all the way down to your belly. Rise up into cobra, open your mouth and stick out your tongue. and press back into child's pose. So I have this sweet friend, she's one of my green witch friends. She and I did initiation together a couple of years ago. And she's younger than I am. And her intensity of her spells is really incredible. She does spell work all the time. And she does it on new moon, dark moon. She was one of the people that when we were deciding on Green Witch um, at the last minute, whether to have our ceremony at night or in the morning. And of course, I was tired and I, you know, I'm a newbie to this witchy thing. 
So I was like, morning would be nice. You know, I want to go to bed. It was like 10 o'clock at night. We were thinking about where we're going to do the ceremony or not. Um, and she's like, we're witches. You can't do the ceremony in the day. <laughs> like, oh, who knew that? It has to be at night. Come on up to your hands and knees, downward facing dog. So we finished the ceremony, like, I don't know, 12 midnight or something like that. And after midnight, she went out, step your right foot forward, open to Virabhadrasana two, right foot forward, Vira two. She went out after our midnight ceremony, our witch initiation, and she went to do a spell that she had been working on. She must have been out till 1 or 2 a.m. doing it. And we still had the full next day to still be part of this retreat. Slide your left arm down your left leg, take your right arm up and back. And I knew how incredible she was with doing her spells. Straighten your front leg and reach for triangle, just because of our conversations. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is she just purchased a incredible space where she will be opening it up to do retreats. It has many lakes, many miles and miles of acreage. Bend your front knee and come to Ardha Chandras in the half moon. She's never owned a house before in her life. Even her family never owned a house. This is the first home that she will ever live in, and it is magnificent. And I really think so much of it has to do with her connection to the earth and the spells that she's done for so long in such reverence. Step back, downward facing dog. And I'm sharing this with you because even the little bit, come forward to plank, lower all the way down, move through vinyasa, or if you want to drop down to your knees, go ahead and take child's. Whatever we do with such reverence, the universe connects and creates and co-creates with us. So if we have a dream in this eclipse, new moon, place it under the new moon gaze. Believe in the opportunity to be in creation with creation. Left foot forward, Vera two. And again, it can be just as simple as healing something that's a wound. Sitting your right arm down your right leg, take your left arm up and back. And again, I don't think that's simple. Good, straighten that left leg and reach for triangle pose. But I think it's more within our grip when we know that it is. Healing is more within our grip when we know it is. We are medicine women, we are medicine men. And so much of it is our perspective and how we speak to ourselves. Bend that front knee, come to half moon, or I'll call it new moon today. And what fear we wrap around. It's, it's okay to feel fear when something happens in our body. Pay attention now, inward. Pay attention inward now. Good. Beautiful, everybody. Step back, downward facing dog. Move forward to plank pose, using your right hand to create Vashasthasana. Summertime is also a time that really magnifies healing energies with the sun being out. And lower your hand down and switch sides. So magnifying whatever it is you wish for. Magnifying your wishes, touch down and lower down, come all the way down to your belly, turn your cheek to the side. Magnifying your wishes with crystals around it. You know, this woo-woo stuff, right? I looked up woo-woo one time in the dictionary. I forget what it said now, but I remember I looked it up and it was pretty perfect. But that energy is so powerful. And I think that's probably why we, we act like it's not real. It's because it's not something that all of us grew up with. Although I did grow up with a woo-woo mom, but I thought she was crazy. Good, come up to your elbows into Sphinx pose. And so for some of you that are healing a exterior wound, drink some rose water. Surround yourself with rose petals. Tuck your toes under, lift your hips up. Or go find some violets, sip on some violet water, which helps to bring 
extreme joy back. Lower down. Let the root of the pelvis connect to the floor, slide your hands back for cobra. Root your pubis down, pull your navel in and lift up. Nice. Press back, downward facing dog. If there's a wound on the body, go find plantain and place it on the body. Stepping your right foot forward, open up to Virabhadrasana too. been looking around here there's some mullen so far that i found which just fascinating to me to see what parts of the world has what good right forearm on right thigh or right hand down to the floor side angle i was saying to my hosts i was saying that you know robin was a really great teacher in saying that don't just believe in the costa rican rainforest herbs believe in what's right in front of you good now drop both hands down to the floor inside your right foot spin up your back heel Clasp your hands behind your back and bow forward again. What's that commercial? What's in your wallet? What's in your yard? Left hand to the floor, right arm to this guy, twist. I'm still gonna do that thing where I walk around to people's yards and go, that's not a weed. I'm gonna yell at them downward facing dog and then i'll tell him what to do with it like i'll be nice i'll be like you can make this into a pesto <laughs> come forward to, you guys are going to be like people are going to say to you come forward to plank lower all the way down and rise up press back a little bit yeah so people are going to be like do you know share i'll tell you like nope nope don't know her the wackadoodle one nope <laughs> nope. she screamed at me the other day that it wasn't a weed then she made me the most delicious pesto. Left foot forward, open to Virabhadrasana too. Good, so find your side angle pose as one that is finding so much opening in your side body. So don't diminish your left side body. Press down, if you have your forearm on your thigh, press down, lift up into your right hip, or take your left hand down to the floor, maybe come into bind. But play with openness, freedom. Beautiful. And then float the hands down to the floor, spin up the back heel, and then clasp your hands behind your back and bow forward here. Nice, Ellen, beautiful. Nice, Lisa. Then drop your right hand down to the floor, swing your left arm up to the sky. Slide it over your ear. Release them down. Step to the front of your mat, standing forward then. Connect your feet deep into the earth. Earth people, rock people, sky people, wind people, fire people. New moon energy, sparkling with possibilities. Hands on your hips, push down through your legs, rise up to stand. Release your arms alongside the body, close your eyes and just feel. Every day I'm following the signs the universe is giving me. And all of my manifestations are turning into reality. I am patient and I am grateful for already receiving everything I'm asking for. I'm living my dreams. And soon it will become so surreal how perfectly it all came together. I also feel like there's been a slight shift in time. The time is moving very fast so that what you wish for comes much faster than it ever has before. Hug your left knee into your chest, please. Wrap your left knee on top of your right knee and right elbow on top of left. 
and sink yourself down into Eagle Pose. Squeeze those shins, widen those inner thighs, soften those ribs. And then keep the arms where they are and swing your left leg back behind you into third warrior leg. And then bring that back leg forward again and rewrap it just for a breath. Rewrap back into eagle. And then fly away. Nice. Make sure you're breathing. Try the second side. Take your right knee on top of your left knee, left elbow on top of right. Sink into eagle. Just one of the things that I'm working on with manifestation is how to clear out. So be careful when you ask your body to clear out because that's exactly what happened. When Veronica helped me, that pain went away. The pain went away. The idea of removing energies that are ready to release and releasing energies can be painful because we're so damn used to them. And even though they don't serve us, they're familiar and fly away. Wonder how pretty that would look if we got together, all of us, and we sat together and we did it. <laughs> this is called the releasing samskara party. Who wants to come? <laughs> Yikes. All right, sit back to chair. Oh, I didn't take you into the third warrior. I'm sorry. Rewrap, please. Sorry, sorry. Rewrap that second side and send that leg back. You can't even tell me. Send it back to third warrior. And then bring it all the way forward, rewrap it. That's the hard part to rewrap, right? Beautiful, nice, Linda. And then sit back into chair. Come on up and sit back into chair. Bring your hands together at your heart center. Inner knees stay wide. Do not let them buckle together. Prayer twist to the right. Nice, Susan. Nice, Pam, Meredith, Kathy, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze your spine. And go to the other side. Nice, Mia. Oh, yeah. Sarah, nice and low. Ronnie, beautiful, Lisa. And bow forward. <laughs> Coffee's kicking in, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oy, oy, oy. Back you go to plank pose. Here, let's try even a more fun Vashisthasana. Right hand holds you. Come into tree, left foot on top of right thigh, or drop your bottom knee. Nice, Kathy. Beautiful. Yeah. Open up, open up, open up, Lisa. Nice. Good. What do you think about stepping that left foot forward all the way to lunge? What do you think? What kind of great idea is that? <laughs> Inhale your arms up to the sky. Hands at your heart center. Prayer twist here to the left. Pull from the crown of your head. Remember, some of you were with me when I was talking about the eighth and ninth chakra. Chakras that reside over the top of your head. So go beyond the crown of your head. Pull that way. Good. Let your hands come down to the floor. Plank pose. Left hand holds you. Vashistasana. Right foot comes into tree if you'd like. I love that. Lift your hips as high as they'll go. And then see if you can be in slow motion as you bring that foot forward for lunge. Like you almost pause halfway. You're like, do I really want to go all that way? And then inhale your arms to the sky. Really nice, everybody. Hands to your heart center, prayer twist to the right. Clearing out, clearing out.
Hands down to the floor, downward facing dog. Beautiful. And take those knees down to the floor. Have your knees right underneath your hips and slide your right arm out to the right, thread the needle. Leaving what you want, you already have. Adding your I am's. I am. I am. Good. Come on up and switch sides. Raising your vibration, lifting it every day manifesting the life that you love and all that you love that's around you. I am so blessed to live the life I am living with all the love that surrounds me. I'm aligned with my highest self, my life in all aspects. It's truly amazing. Live by the light of the moon and stars and sun galaxy. Eat from Mother Earth. All her wild ones are so much more highly nourishing than anything I can get in the store. And I'm not saying don't get stuff from the store. Come on up, downward dog. Right, step your right foot forward, please. Bring your left foot in just a little bit so both legs can go straight. Keep that back heel drops, you nice bow over that front leg. Nice, Jane. Nice, Rhonda Meredith. Beautiful, Pam Allen. Good, I want you to do twisting triangle here. So lift your right arm to the sky. Keep those hips square though. Watch those knees, don't let them fall in. Keep them steadfast. Widen the knees, squeeze the shins, widen the inner thighs, pull those sit bones, widen apart. Good, and then move forward into twisting half moon. You can reach back for that ankle. Stay right where you are. Super pretty. Go ahead, step back, downward facing dog. You can take it through vinyasa of your choice or none at all. Left foot steps forward, bring the right foot in. Just enough, drop into that back heel. What is the programming that you have acquired? It was like a four and a half hour drive up here to Lake Plas, and so Eileen and I were talking a lot. And one of the things that we were talking about was how funny it was that I've always thought of my dream of living by the water and having a retreat center would happen, you know, in my sixties or, and she jokingly, or it's fun, it was to start, she's like, not everybody lives by the waters in their sixties. <laughs> and we go. You, you can be in your 50s and live by the water. Come into the twisting triangle. What stops us is those ways of thinking. Keep your back foot on the floor for this one. Twisting triangle first. There you go. Left arm up to the sky, Linda. There you go. Remember those hips. Keep pushing. Really feel like my hands are in your hips and pulling you back as you pull your head forward. Beautiful. And then you can bend that left knee and come forward into half moon twisted. Left arm up to the sky. Left arm up. Yep. Maybe reach back for that ankle or stay right where you are.
Beautiful. Bring both feet to the front of your mat, standing forward bend. I'm going to try to explain something. Many of you, if not all of you, have done this with me before, but it always is something kind of interesting to try to explain you through. But let's see if I can do it. Stay in standing, stay in standing split and raise your left leg to the sky. I mean, stay in standing forward bend and raise your left leg to the sky, standing split. Good. Now bend your right knee and start to sweep your left knee behind your right knee as you come all the way down to the floor into twist. So your back knee just keeps coming down until your butt releases down to the floor. Good. And your right knee is in front of your left. Yes, Jane. Thank you. Yep. You're almost there, Sarah. Great. And now you might just shift your hips slightly more to the left because of the way you had to come down into that and then come into that seated spinal twist, twisting to your right. Nice, Joy. That's it, Mia. And again, that moment that you just squeeze your spine together and then pull those sit bones wide and root down through your seat. Come back. You got to slide yourself back up to that standing, uh, standing forward bend. Inhaling that left leg to the sky. Is that the second side? Do the second side. Sliding it behind your knee, coming down into that seated spinal twist. Making sure you're on the second side. Jane, did I screw you up? Did you change legs? I don't think you changed legs. Go ahead, just change to the other side. You don't have to do it so fancy. If I screwed you up, just change legs and make sure you're looking to the other direction. <laughs> Good. Look to the other direction, whichever way that is for you, with the same knee lifted. So change knees if you need to. Good. And then unravel yourself and stretch your legs out in front of you. And take your arms out in front of you and lower slowly down to your mat. Lower slowly down to your mat. Once you arrive on your back, hug your knees into your chest. And roll side to side here. I'm going to say it a little bit with that twisting theme. So stretch your right leg out to the floor, or excuse me, stretch your left leg out to the floor just so I can stay on track. I'm going to lift your hips and send them slightly to the right, and then take your right knee to the left for spinal twist. And then I'd like, if you can, reach down with your right hand to your left ankle, so doing the thigh stretch. Keep breathing here. I am the creator of my reality. I am being blessed every day. Help to let go of stress and worry, which is why I do my practice. I'm looking for the signs from the universe. And all of you know that I always say, if like an animal crosses your path, which is not a normal thing, you know, if a squirrel, and I hate to say poor squirrels, but squirrels cross, we see that pretty regularly. But if something is grabbing your attention, look it up. What's the animal medicine for you? 
a certain thought keeps popping in your head, take note of it. You can only imagine the ways that the universe is trying to communicate with us. Good, come on back and try the other side. If you want to reach back for that ankle, go ahead and do that. Just enjoy your breath here and twist and push your sacrum slightly back and then get that twist on. Like really feel that twist is coming from a place of great stability in your pelvis. Breathing, noting, watching, listening. Beautiful. One more breath here. And you exhale, come back to center. Now lift and shift your hips to the right and let both knees drop to the left. So one stacks on top of the other, and the knees are pretty close up towards your navel. So really take those hips over to the right just a little bit. There you go. Nice job, Kristen. And then open up your arms, get a really wide open eagle arms. Wide open letter T, nice Ellen. Beautiful. Come on up and switch to the other side. Ring of fire eclipse. Like that C to energy, right? Stepping through the fire, it's knowing that you will be protected. All the little sacred acts that you do, all the spells that you create. And spell work is as simple as just calling in earth, water, fire, air to support whatever it is that you wish to create. Good, come on back. Did we do both sides? No, second side, right? Do we do both sides? Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, let's go ankle to knee here then, sorry. Hate to get you guys involved. Ankle to knee, right ankle on top of left knee. And then I want you to drop the left foot down to the floor and drop both knees to the right. And then take your arms overhead and hold opposite elbows if you can. Or wrists. Again, if your knee doesn't like this, you can always drop the right foot down to the floor. But if your knee does okay with this, and this is a nice stretch along the whole side of your leg. Beautiful, come on up, switch legs, ankle to knee, let it drop to the other side.
Beautiful, everybody. Lift it back up. Let's come into bridge. If you want to do a restorative bridge, you're welcome to put a block underneath your sacrum. Otherwise, planting your feet well. Lifting your hips up, clasping your hands underneath you. If you want to do it with a block, I highly recommend. And I know I've given, I offer this to you a lot, but if you haven't done it with a block for a while, it's really lovely. It is nice sometimes to just say, let's let's be supported in this. So either a block underneath your sacrum or not. Make sure your shins are still drawing together. Pressing your knees forward, pulling your navel in, lifting your chest. And moving into a deep breath to clear, clearing house. I am. I am. Moon energy is definitely about dreams and, des and desires that come from deep inside of you. The sun energy has a lot to do with the passion that's outside of you. One is not better than the other. However, both are important. If you don't have a block underneath, you might want to come down and rest for a moment and then go back up. If you do have a block, go ahead and stay there for another moment. Good, and then as you lower back down, remove the block, bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees drop wide and take some deep breaths into your belly, soft belly. You would like to just for a moment move your head from side to side, releasing any tension in the neck. Do it nice and slow. Maybe at some point the ear comes closer to the floor. You're not forcing. Good, and then draw the knees back together. Hug your knees into your chest. Roll all the way up to sit. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Bring your right knee in towards your chest. And then let your right knee fall out to the side, Janna Shoshasana. Move your right knee further back, as we often do, so it's a big wider yeah and then slide your left arm inside your left leg take your right arm over your ear side stretch try to keep that upper arm very straight good and then go ahead and slide your body over that extended like turn 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 so it's a bigger turn takes you a moment Such a sweet gentleness in the forward bend. Forward bends are definitely moments to be deep listening.
And then what does it feel like as you start to turn a little bit more over toward that left leg, almost like you're going to get your right hand on the outside of that left leg. And you're just going to keep turning and turning and turning. And if you can reach that right arm toward that left leg, take the left arm over your ear and side stretch in that direction. And then one more time, bow over the leg to see if it gave you maybe a little bit more direction. And slowly come on up. Beautiful. Wow. As you're ready, change sides. And again, move that knee further back so you get a little bit more twist energy. Good. Start by side stretching first. Let's take your right arm inside your right leg, left arm over your ear. And then there's just a slow energy of bowing over that leg, nice and slow. It's just fun to feel that kind of curvy twist in your spine, softening in the ribs, heart moving forward. And it's just like you're on a walk in the woods and you're just going deeper and deeper and deeper. So you start to move more toward that right leg. Left arm maybe comes on the outside. Scoop that navel, push your sit bones back a lot here, push back a lot, and then see if you can sweep your right arm over your ear. Like hollow out that belly by pushing that seat back, that sacrum wide. And then fall over that leg for just one more breath. And then come on up. Beautiful. Step back downward facing dog. What? And stepping your right foot forward, walk to the left until you come to the center of your mat. And a deep bow. Is it okay if we move? Um, I actually have five minutes left. I have five minutes. I'm sorry, guys. Stay right there. I can also move in the house. I'll move in the house so you can do what you're supposed to do. You guys stay right where you are. Yeah. I want you to drop down to your knees and come into that full frog. So you just walk your knees forward. Up your knees down to the floor. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So a little something underneath your knees is always helpful. Let's see if I can find you again here. And then the trick here is to Either press your hips back or press your spine forward. Find that really perfect place. Never go back and look at that one on YouTube when we have this is recorded. She's making me know. Good. And then go ahead and pop right back up into that wide legged forward bend.
Beautiful. And then walk to the front of the mat. Good, standing forward to bend. So I want you to go into inversion. I'm gonna to need to reset my, com my camera here for a second, just cause I had to move inside. But go ahead and prepare for an inversion. So either shoulders stand, head stand, hands stand, form balance. And I'm gonna move my seat so that I can find a little better space. So you go get into your inversion, I'll be right back. Make sure that you're adding in all the possibilities here. All the possibilities of balance. All the opportunity to even here repeat the I am. I am. I am. Wherever you find yourself. Your breath get just a little bit deeper. Every time that we accentuate the breath, we get just a little clearer, a little more mindful. And then begin to bring yourself down from whatever inversion that you created. And then I'll meet you at the front of your mats, sitting in a comfortable cross-legged position. Closing your eyes. Finding the bounty of your breath. And for just a moment, breathing in through the left nostril and out through the right without using your hand. In through the left nostril and out through the right without using your hand. Very simple exercise to connect to moon energy. We are a very fortunate group of people who know these techniques to connect us deeper on a deeper level to this unknown world. This unmanifest and manifest. The sun and moon. Just one more minute here. Following the breath in through the left nostril and out through the right. 
in through the left and out through the right. It seems so simple, but when we connect, this is new moon energy and we connect with moon breath, what? We clear the mind, the gut mind, the heart mind, brain mind. And then on your next exhale, if you'd like to stay here to meditate in silence, or <laughs> I do have some lawnmower noise, noise behind me, so you can add that to your meditation if you hear it, or lie down on your back and rest. The most perfect place in the world is where you manifest from you, where you live that authentic life, where that your inner world and your outer world are the same. Not to say that you don't have your secret space, but that there's no difference between what you feel from inside and what you present into the world, that this is all in manifesting your truth. to gather on this new moon. We offer each other the possibilities. We remind each other just like Hanuman's friend reminded him that he has all the power to create and to manifest and to do what is necessary in any given moment. So as you offer me that power, I offer it back to you. If you're lying down, slowly begin your way up, back to sit. Bring your hands together at your heart center. 
feel the beat of your heart crying out yes let's do this let's manifest our dreams inhale for the sound of om deep breath in Letting your hands to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste, everybody. Thank you so, 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 so much. Go have a beautiful day. If you want to join uh, Veronica later, she has a class. Well, I have Kundalini coming up next, but she has a class at 6 o'clock. And then Josh leads a Kirtan um, song class at 7.30. So if you want to jump onto that, we'll see you later. Have sure. a beautiful day. Yeah. I wanted to tell you, you know, you were talking in the beginning about blessing the new moon and how we tend to not in the Jewish religion on yeah. the Saturday before the new moon, when after they read the Torah, they always bless it. And then the day of the new moon, the day where sometimes it's two days, they there's a, a prayer that you say. I love it. You know, I honestly, Ronnie, I feel like there's so much in Judaism that I really want to study because whatever I've heard, and I, ha I have to say I haven't studied a lot, but what I've heard is, been, is so in connection with so many things that I think are lost in certain places. So, it's true. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Thank I you. Went to, I went to a, a Jewish Havai graduation uh, yesterday, and they were... They, they did a little thing about how in Judaism, you, you can have two pieces of paper, one in each pocket. And one says, and this reminded me of, of training. One says, the world was made for me. And the other one says, I am but dust and ashes. And I thought, oh God, I just learned that from my teacher training, so. I love it. Isn't that great? I love it, I love it, I love it. Yes, it's all great, it's all great. It really is, I will, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, also, um, I had some problem with the logging on, so I'm not logged in. So if you could just check me off. Take care Thank of you. you. No problem. Goodbye. Bye. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank Bye, you. Cheryl. Goodbye, lovelies. Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.